of Isaiah chapter 53 who has believed what he has heard from us and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed for he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground he had no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him he was despised and rejected by men a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him the chastisement that brought us peace. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity on us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep, like a sheep that is before its shearers and silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. And they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. And, and although he had done no violence, there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has, 
he has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied. And by his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, before, because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressions. We read in so many places, we read in so many articles, we see it so much in social media, we put it on our profiles, we see it in car stickers. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. It's quoted on celebrities, it's quoted by celebrities, and it's written on buildings, billboards. And we get, indeed, we continue to read that and we see the first part of it where he says, for God so loved the world. But apparently, you can't have just that statement because it says there, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So what am I trying to say here? Friends, you can't talk about God's love without talking about his son. And his son is named Jesus Christ. And indeed, if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we say that he is the son of God. And if we do believe in him, it says in the rest of the verse that we shall not perish, but we should have eternal life. But, you know, we've, we've, we've done so much to go ahead and say, you should believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Say the sinner's prayer. Do this or do that. Confess with your mouth. And none of that, I'm not saying any of that is bad. But what does it really mean for us to believe in him? Friends, it's by knowing God's love. You want to know about you want to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, just like we say na hindi natin pwedeng pag-usapan ang pagmamahal ng ating Panginoon without talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can't talk about the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can't say that we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ without talking about His love for us. And how, do, how then should we know about His love? How then should we know about God's love for us? A good place for us to start, kapag napag-usapan po natin, pinag-usapan po natin dito, is John chapter 3, verse 16. About God's love, we can go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. What does it read there? It says, By this we know love, that He laid down His life for us. There you go. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. Today, we remember the intricate details of how Christ, as a shepherd, laid down his life for you and me. Being God, wasn't this supposed to be easy? No. My friends, for Christ to be born, I mean, Christ had to be born as one of us. It couldn't, it couldn't just be a simple taking away of our sins. No. He had to be born as one of us, and he had to serve himself up as a sacrifice. Indeed, we read in 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and has sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. It's just as we just read in Isaiah chapter 53. This Jesus that we say we believe in, look, I mean, all of the details are there. If you go back, if you follow me with that, um, if you follow me in that chapter, it says there that, you know, we see Jesus nowadays, it's that picture of a white guy with the long hair, a pretty face without the pimples, maybe no dimples or nothing like that. Nice beard and nice facial hair, right? But apparently it says in Isaiah chapter 53 that his face wasn't very remarkable. I'm not saying he's ugly, but he wasn't very remarkable. And he was despised. In the undertaking of his sacrifice, my friends, he was despised. He took the hatred of humanity from the outside in. He took all the jeering, the ridicule. And being a man of sorrows, as it says in Isaiah chapter 53, not only was he taking fear and anxiety from the outside in, not only was he taking hatred from the outside in, but he was also dealing with the thoughts that each and every one of us would also deal in our time here on earth. For we are no strangers to the thoughts that we give ourselves, from the hatred that we, we give ourselves. 
Not only are we being hated by the people outside, from the outside in, but we're the ones who hate ourselves as well. We're the ones who condemn ourselves. We're the ones who say how ugly we are, or we say how fat we are, or we say how, how much of a failure we are. And, you know, it doesn't, go, it doesn't get any better with age, right? You know, the older you get, some of us tend to focus on the failures that we have and call ourselves failures. And that's the thing, and that's, that's what the Lord... I mean, we, we, we like to talk about the outside part, you know, the Gentiles, the Pharisees, they were all making fun of him, they were slapping him and all that, outside in. But it says here that Jesus Christ was a man of sorrows and he took our sorrows as well. He was taking our hatred from the inside out as well. He took on all grief imaginable and emptied of all esteem. He was rejected and he was ignored. Long before the nails struck his hands, he was already experiencing such pain, my friends. And it was for us, speaking of nails, it was for us that he was pierced, and it was for us that he was crushed. He became sin, and he was stricken, smitten, and afflicted in our place. And take note, throughout all this, let's remember, yeah, he was getting hurt. Yeah, he was taking all this pain. But we were the ones who were supposed to take it. We were the ones who transgressed. We were the ones who had iniquity in our hearts. But He was the one who chose to take all the pain. He was the one who chose to take all the hatred. He was the righteous one. Here's the thing. He deserved all the praise. We like to say that, don't we? He deserves all the praise. We know that He deserves all the praise. We know that He deserves all the forgiveness. We know that He deserves all the awards and all the rewards that heaven has to offer for Him. But it was for our sake, my friends, that instead of all of these wonderful things, he took chastisement. He took pain. He took penalty. He took rebuke. He took criticism. All so that we would be the ones to receive the peace. And he was the living one, my friends. Not only was he the righteous one, but he was the living one. And he was the one who deserved joy. He was the one who deserved comfort. He was the one who deserved pleasure. But again, just as it was for our sake that he took chastisement, it was for our sake that he also took the wounds, he took the pain, he took the grief, all so that we would be healed. We would be so bold to go ahead and claim healing only because it was the Lord Jesus Christ who took the pain and the chastisement for us. And in all that, he took it for all for our sake. And he could have complained. I like to keep on saying there's no, there's no verse in the Bible where Jesus cries out in pain, where it mentions then Jesus Christ out, cried out in pain, then Jesus said, ouch, then Jesus said, aray ko naman, ang sakit naman yan. No, he stayed silent. And not only did he stay silent because here's the thing, in all of the pain that he was thinking, he was it, was, it says here in Isaiah chapter 53, it says here, for the joy of the prize. He endured the cross. My friends, not only did he find it proper for him to just stay quiet, but he couldn't keep in his excitement because he knew for a fact that after all of this pain and after all of this suffering, the reward was me. The reward was you. Or the reward was all of us who would come to believe in him, that we would not perish. He perished that we would not perish. And we, took, we would take the eternal life that he deserves, my friends. He kept silent because all his trust, that's a wonderful thing right here. It says here, he kept silent because all his trust was placed upon his father. He submitted to the will of God, much so that he went past the pain to understand the salvation that lay beyond, that the will of the Lord would be fulfilled. He wasn't focused on the pain, my friends. He was focused on the reward, which is you and it is me. He wasn't focused on the pain because he was focused, he was thinking to himself, this is the Lord's will being done as we speak. And all in all, we remember in this day, we remember 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It says there that for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin. He made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Tonight, let's remember, Christ was despised and hated for us to be accepted by God. 
At the cross, Christ took the sorrows, the fear and anxiety we inflict upon ourselves, the fear and anxiety that comes from the world, from the outside in, the fear and anxiety that we put and we put place upon ourselves. He took all of that, that we would have not just joy, but everlasting joy, peace, eternal peace and calm, all because we have been reconciled to God. Christ took our chastisement that we would have his peace. And Christ took our pain that we would have his healing. Christ endured the cross for the joy set before him and for the will of God to be fulfilled, for the love of God to be proven beyond the shadow of a doubt. If you're wondering if the Lord Jesus Christ loves you, if, you, if you're wondering if there's anyone in this world who loves you, look no further than the creator of the universe. And how do you know that he loves you? Well, look at the cross, my friends. That's where you find out, and that's where you know that he is loving you with an everlasting love. And so we say thank you, O oh God. Thank you for Jesus. And Jesus, thank you for the cross. Indeed, as we sang, thank you for the cross. Hallelujah. As we gather on this Good Friday to partake in Holy Communion, let us remember the words of Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. He wrote, For I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. On this day, we remember the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. He willingly gave his life so that we could be reconciled to God and have eternal life. As we partake in the bread and the cup, let us do so in remembrance of our Savior and with hearts full of gratitude for his love and mercy. May this Holy Communion be a time of reflection and solemnity as we contemplate the death of Jesus, sacrifice and the hope that it brings to us all. May the Lord bless us as we remember his sacrifice and partake in this holy communion. Amen. Let's eat and drink.
death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me Death has lost its grip.